Hi there. Welcome to the second lecture, lecture 2.2, of our short introduction to the fundamentals of structural dynamics. In the first lecture, lecture 2.1, we introduced the notion of the degrees of freedom and discussed the free and force vibrations of a simple residential building, which we modeled assuming that it can be modeled by a single degree of freedom system and without, which is important, energy dissipation. You might remember that the latter assumption led us to a doubtful conclusion of infinite amplification of the building response at resonance. In the current model, module, lecture, we will first show that, of course, this amplification is not infinite in reality. We will discuss the reasons for that. And finally, I'll shortly introduce you to the models of a building which are of two degrees of freedom. Now, the reason that the model discussed in the previous lecture predicts infinite amplification at resonance is that we did not account for energy dissipation that takes place during vibration. This dissipation can take place in, in case of the building in walls, as you see here in this slide, in joints or in external dampening devices used deliberately to reduce structural vibrations as a response to earthquakes. The generic term for this energy dissipation is damping. What does damping do to the structures? Let's ask ourselves. This slide shows the effect of the damping on free vibration of the structure. We can see that while the structure without damping keeps vibrating, if I kicked it for example, vibration of the structure with damping decays with time, it becomes smaller. Naturally, the latter sc scenario is the realistic one, nothing vibrates forever. In mathematical modeling, the damping usually assumed to be proportional to the velocity of the structure, which leads to the modification of the equation of motion that is shown in this slide. The amount of damping is usually characterized by the so-called damping ratio, I call it zeta, which is the ratio of the damping coefficient of the viscous damper, as we assumed, and the so-called critical damping that depends on the here shown combination of the mass and stiffness of the structure. The damping ratio is normally specified in percents, such as 2% or 10% of the critical. The larger the damping ratio, the quicker the decay of free vibration, as can be seen at the graph here. As to the dynamic amplification factor shown in this slide, you remember it from the last lecture, right? We can see that damping has very significant effect on vibration at resonance. Even a small percentage of damping, you see, limits the motion of the structure at resonance significantly. Often, single degrees of freedom models do not suffice in description of vibrations of structures. For example, if we need to understand and model the dynamics of a two-story building, well, I, would, I, I think you would agree with me, a two degrees of freedom model is necessary for each floor. Let us look at a movie, again small scale, that gives just a flavor of how a two-story building vibrates, being excited at the base again, to mimic the earthquake. We can see, I hope, that the two stories of the building do not necessarily move in phase. And not only the amplitude, but also the shapes of vibration can be and do depend on the excitation frequency. The latter is a feature that single degrees of freedom systems do not have. This slide summarizes the main fundamental differences you see here between a single degree of freedom system and a two degree of freedom system. These differences are, 
First, the presence of two natural frequencies in the two degrees of freedom systems, and consequently two frequencies of the base motion that can cause resonance. Second, the existence of distinct shapes of vibration for two degrees of freedom system that correspond to those two natural frequencies. The latter property leads to a strong dependence of the displacement and also very importantly stress distribution in the structure on the excitation frequency. The mentioned shapes of vibrations are visualized in the animations shown in this slide. We can see that the stories of the building can vibrate both in phase, like this, and in antiphase, like that. Having these animations at the background, I would like now to summarize the main concepts introduced in the lecture 1 and 2, so we call it 2.1 and 2.2, that address the fundamentals of structural dynamics. We discuss the main mechanical properties of the structures being the mass, stiffness, and damping. The mass and stiffness define the natural frequencies of the structure and thereby tell us what motion of the base will cause resonance. Resonance is a significant amplification of the response of the structure. It takes place when the frequency of excitation gets close to one of the natural frequencies of the structure. Resonance may be, may be a very dangerous phenomenon and therefore it must be, really must be taken into account in design and evaluation of structural integrity and safety. Damping in structures helps reduce resonance amplification. Even a small amount of damping we saw can decrease the vibration to a desirable level. And finally, from a very short indeed analysis of two degrees of freedom I presented structures, we understood that the distribution of stresses and displacements depend on the frequency of excitation. The latter effects should be taken into account when identifying most sensitive to earthquakes parts of the structure. And with this statement, I would like to conclude this lecture. Thank you.